Hello again, my friends. This is Kunita, and as always, I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. From the Word of God in the book of Deuteronomy, we find this phrase, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. You know, my friends, this is a marvelous, almost perfect expression of the work of the Holy Spirit and the grace of Almighty God within the souls of those he has called to be his. Those of you who have walked with the Lord for many years, as I have, can recount the numerous slayings and restorals, the woundings and the healings at the hand of Almighty God as he builds and shapes us into the vessel he would have us to be. This is something that we come to understand as we walk with the Lord over time. But there are many who, who as they first come to the Lord, they think it's going to be some kind of blissful walk, some kind of holy experience. And they don't understand that when we come to the Lord, the first thing is that there is much work to be done within us and upon us before we can reach those heights, those heights of spiritual, what, ecstasy, I guess? Did those who, who newly come to the faith expect? I remember when I uh, first got saved, it was a dramatic experience, had a large impact on my life. But yet I had no idea of what the path before me had in store. You see, the work of grace in the soul, even in its very beginnings, cuts deeply into our tenderest parts. It slices and flays open the conscience to the eye of God's infinite purity and holiness. The entrance of thy words giveth light, the word tells us. And like a laser scalpel, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, as all of us know, even unto the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is the discerner of the thoughts and intents deep within our hearts. The operation, the cleansing of God can be painful. We know this. Yet we also know, as we look back upon our lives, that it must be thorough. The field, the field, my friends, must be plowed, broken up and furrowed before the implanted seed the implanted seed of God can find just that sweet spot, the place God has prepared for the seed to germinate and grow and bloom and produce the fruit that he is seeking. You see, my friends, there is much to be done, much to be done in the heart before Christ can fully dwell in him by faith, or be formed in you unto the hope of glory. Hear the words of our Lord himself from the book of Luke. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. The heart, the heart in man is naturally strong-willed stubborn and very hard. This we know. Thorns, thistles, and briars overspread its surface, and the rank weeds of self and rebellion have taken deep root, 
So you see, my friends, much tending, digging up and tearing out of these beloved sins that we hide and tend within ourselves. As well as so much of our own inbred self-righteousness in fleshy holiness, creature strength, and our own thoughts of self-sufficiency. All this is needed to prepare us to receive his implantation of the Spirit of God, to separate us from the world and its illusions, to embitter us too much that we most loved, and lastly, to lay us out crying for mercy at the foot of the cross. This work then, you see, my friends, this work of conviction must be deep, must be thorough, and it will sometimes be painful in order to make room for Christ and his living and breathing salvation And as we walk on and as we proceed in our life, it will be the same repeatedly, my friends, over and over again with every new manifestation or discovery or special visitation of our Lord upon our lives. You see, every application of his blood, every visitation of his spirit, or shedding abroad of his love within us. These divine realities as they come to us, as they are given to us, do not float upon the surface, but always as we walk along, they sink deep and penetrate into our heart of hearts and into our inmost, deepest soul to slay, cleanse, and restore. This is the walk, the walk of faith that we have come to know. And here, my friends, as we walk, our, our Lord holds us, holds us fast and firm to the fires of conviction until he has slain them outright. And then he rebuilds. Praise Almighty God. And when he restores, when he restores and makes new again, he heals, my friends, as deep as he wounds and reveals the truth of his love just as powerfully as he had applied the scalpel. Amen. Until the next time, my friends, have a wonderful day in our risen Lord. Goodbye.